Hey guys, it's a beautiful day. We're out on this trail in Ranchos Palos Verdes, one of my favorite parts of California. Fresh air, a uh, little bit of rain earlier, and these bikes have just been taking us all through the neighborhoods, and even on this, this dirt trail, which is pretty cool because they don't have a suspension fork. There's no suspension seat post uh, that comes with the bike, though you could replace that uh, 31.6 millimeter uh, rigid aluminum post right there. We do have a really soft, comfortable leather saddle, these nice ergonomic grips, flat bar, so it's a little bit more aggressive. This is it's kind of set up as a commuter or maybe a sporty commuter. You look at this rack, it doesn't have a platform on top. It's more of a hang style. We do have these holes where you could, um, some uh, rack systems, they actually have these little blockers and stuff so that the pannier doesn't slide forward or back. And a lot of them have this little lever that catches right here on the support arms. And these aluminum alloy fenders, Underneath, you can actually see there's this extra, uh, like, kind of support bar and then wiring because we've got integrated lights from Supernova, three LED in the rear, and then this really nice headlight, aluminum housing. It's aimable, points where you steer. I love that kind of thing. I'm a safety nut, and these bikes look great. It's all black, including the black spokes, 14 gauge front, 13 gauge rear, a little sturdier, nice black rims with some good minimalist branding going on. Everything is black, right? So having reflective sidewall stripes and then these brown sidewalls, just really classy. This bike is beautiful, sporty. It's like a luxury sports car is really how I feel. Even the chain protector right there, it's plastic. It's kind of minimalist. It's not gonna rattle around a whole lot, which is great because this is a speed Pedelec. Uh, just the bike is set up really nicely. And I think I'm a fan of the drive system that they chose. We got the new Bosch Performance Line Speed down there. Generation four, it's more compact. It's lighter weight, 6.3 pounds compared to 8.8. .8. So like roughly two and a half pounds lighter. I mean, that's significant. Still gives you tons of support, but they've changed from a proprietary small sprocket that spins two and a half revolutions. It was like this reduction gear system to a standard 44 tooth chain ring, right? And it's just one to one ratio. When you pedal to how it turns, the cadence support is now higher. It's above 120 RPM. And for me, that's really good. I like to spin quickly while I'm riding and this thing can keep up. It's pretty smooth, relatively quiet. You do get a little like, and you're going to hear that during the ride test. This is kind of a pre-production. It's like right before they get the final builds, we're getting a little early look, uh, which, which I always love and appreciate. But there are a couple things that are just a little bit, you can see like this cover isn't fitting quite perfectly here. That's gonna be improved on the final build, but I actually really like what they've done with the cover and it matches this bike perfectly. All the new covers for the Bosch power tubes are plastic like this and they're black. So it's a lot lighter weight than the old ones were aluminum alloy and they didn't match when it was bike to bike. Uh, so I feel like Bulls is really standardizing their systems. And this one has the 625 watt hour power pack. So it's really high capacity, 36 volts, 17.4 amp hours actually comes out to like, I think it's 626.4 when you do the math. Um, just phenomenal. And again, the speed motors are rated at the base rate of 350 watts. Uh, they don't really give a top watt rating, but they now offer 75 Newton meters of torque, just like the Performance Line CX, like the mountain motors. This is just phenomenal. It takes off really fast and it helps you reach and then maintain roughly 28 miles per hour, a lot better than some of the older speed motors. So just everything is really improved that way. Um, coming back to just what this bike is all about. You can see here, there's like a mid-step frame, and then we've got the high-step diamond frame over there. They have four frame choices. Um, I believe three of them are gonna be brought to the US. I love that they included a kickstand here. I think that's 40 millimeter mounting provisions. It's got adjustable length. We've got quick release front and rear standard, nine millimeter axles with a quick release skewer. Lots of extra threaded eyelets. So, you know, these 60 millimeter aluminum alloy fenders, we've got the rack and everything, but you could add your own rack if you didn't like this style or you wanted to replace this someday, which I think is really cool. And then we've got two sets of bottle cage bosses here. This one is set up with the Monkey Lynx uh, kind of magnetic adapter, and you have to pay extra for the bottle if you want to go that way. But it's nice that they include that. And since this one has lights built in, they don't have the Monkey Link um, little clamp back here or uh, stem. And I love that even on the mid-step, they also have two sets of provisions for bottle cages, or maybe you've got like a folding lock or something. These do use Abus key sets, so you can get them key to like, and that way you only have one key to unlock your bike, one key to do the lock, 
it's just so much more convenient. It's it's re really kind of the way it should be if you're paying a little bit more money. Forty six ninety nine. So this is, you know, you're definitely it's it's kind of the higher range. There are a lot of e bikes out there that have like hub motors and stuff. This is really good weight distribution, high capacity battery, efficient drivetrain, and really Bulls has done a great job with the uh, integration here. They've set it up so see back here we've got the the disc brake mount shimano hydraulic disc brakes by the way 180 up front 160 millimeter in the back um, there's a little magnet mounting that passes by a sensor for speed a lot of the other bosch bikes have like a magnet that is clamped onto one of the spokes and then there's a reader on the left chain stay so see if i can find this real quick here try to point it out so there we go see there's a little extra magnet and then it passes by a sensor that's just a lot tighter a lot cleaner it's not going to get bumped out of position and then the motor is measuring your pedal cadence and pedal torque it's combining those three signals over a thousand times per second and in so doing it's just it's really natural it's become even more smooth in the four different levels of assist uh, as well as offering shift detection. So as you shift gears, it can sense the difference between your pedal strokes and then like sharp changes, and it's designed to ease back. It's a software-driven system that's really proprietary to Bosch. There are some other systems out there that have physical shift sensing, and it's a lot more like off, on, off, and, it, and a bit more delayed. This is pretty fast. It's not perfect, so if you're pedaling hard on this bike, you can still stress that chain and uh, the sprockets and everything, just like you would on a normal bike, but considering there's 75 Newton meters of torque on offer, it's it's really good that the system's designed for some self-protection. I uh, love that they got the slap guard here, sticker, FSA, cranks, 170 millimeter, as well as that chain protector that you know, it kind of complements this plastic chain protector up here. This is almost like a bash guard or something. And look how low that goes. Same thing with the front fender. It really goes low. And I was just doing some experiments here, like as I was pedaling, just trying to make sure there's enough space here so you don't clip that when you're pedaling. That's something I think about. I might have, I don't know, it might have been when we were moving the bikes earlier. There aren't too many scratches up here. And it's got a plastic piece at the bottom. These are aluminum alloy. The whole bike, again, there's not a lot of steel on this thing. It's not going to have rust issues which is really nice. So coming back, we have a 44 tooth chain ring with narrow wide teeth. That's gonna give you a little bit uh, better grab so you don't drop the chain. We do have that outer guard, but it doesn't have a full chain guide. So narrow wide teeth pretty much solves that for me. And in the rear, we have 10 speeds, 11 to 42 tooth, pretty good spread. Shimano Dior, that's a pretty good derailleur, several steps up in the Shimano line. And it does have this one way clutch Put that in the on position right there and it tightens things up a little bit so it's just it's not going to bounce around quite as much you can put it in the off position like this when you need to do some bike maintenance maybe you're removing that rear wheel to fix a flat or something but shouldn't be a big deal shouldn't have a lot of flats these are the schwabby big ben tires in addition to the reflective sidewall stripe uh, they do have i think it's k guard three let's see if we can find that do, do, do. There it is. Boom. K Guard 3, baby. I love it. Uh, it's a good setup. And then let's see, what are these? These are 28 by 2.0. So, you know, they're they're kind of a, a blend. These aren't plus size tires. They're not 2.25. They're narrow enough that they're going to be quick, a little bit lighter weight, but, um, you know, they're not so narrow that it's uncomfortable, again, given that you don't have a suspension fork or anything. And this is a tapered steerer tube here. So you could always swap this out and get an air fork someday. You could you could really do a lot with this platform. Uh, but the way it's set up, it makes, makes pretty good sense to me. And it's a little bit sportier, almost like a road bike by not having suspension because there's not that extra like pivot point, the motion in the frame. When you pedal, that energy goes directly into those wheels and propels you forwards. So yeah, big win for me. Try to think here what else on this bike uh, stood out to me like that nice big reflector that they added up high that's really important and considering you can't have like a trunk bag here it's not like it's going to get blocked um you know we already mentioned the tail light back here and some of the extra bosses the flat bar this really cool bell up here it's it's a sporty bike uh, pretty good cable integration as well internally routed right there let's see if we uh Fernando, do we have keys for these? You do? Okay. He might help us out. We could show what the battery looks like taking one out. This is the first time I've actually seen the 625 watt hour pack. I think it's about 7.7 .7 pounds. 
So, you know, 7.7 .7 pounds on that, 6.3 pounds on the motor. You can actually ride this. Here we go. I've got this plastic shield. I think you can actually ride it just with the plastic shield on if you wanted to take the battery out, just for fun, like a regular bike. You're not gonna get like friction or anything from the drive system. It's meant to freewheel. Um, there we go. So he unlocked it. It came out to that first position. Then he pressed the button and it comes out all the way. That's what it looks like in there. Kind of cool, pretty clean. I just wanna experiment with this thing real quick here. Take this cover and just, yeah. Put it back on so that that's kind of cool you got a little almost like a hiding spot in there 7.7 .7 pounds power tube 625 love this thing and on the other end we've got a charge level indicator kind of press that and get a little bit of feedback about how full the battery is the little leds and then the interface for the charger thank you very much we can pop this back on i'm going to talk about the charger over here so this is a 1.7 pound Bosch charger. It's their fast charger. Really appreciate the four amps. It's going to fill this thing faster since it is kind of a high capacity battery. I'm estimating like between five and five and a half hours. And then the range on this 40 to maybe a hundred miles. It really depends on the level of assist and how fast you ride because as you go above 20 miles per hour, you got that wind resistance against your body. It's a little bit more of a, you know, forward, potentially forward aggressive if you wanted to flip that stem or remove some of those spacers. It should be fairly efficient with these tires and everything. But again, the faster you go, it's going to eat at that battery a little bit faster as well. Thank you so much, Fernando. And I love, check this out, on the, the, the drive side of the bike, that's where they put uh, the key, the locking core, and the charging port. So, you know, if something happens to your kickstand, a lot of times if you're laying a bike down, you, you want to do it on the non-drive side like this, right? And then you can still access all that stuff. And it's far away from the crank arm. So if those get spun or something, you're not gonna get snagged. I love that this thing is connected with that little, it's not really a leash, but it's like, I guess kind of a lever or something, an arm that keeps that cover from getting lost. And this is just further away from water and everything. This is a big improvement on their 2020 bikes. Something that, it's a minor thing, but it can make a difference in the long run. So for me, that's, that's pretty cool. Now I think I'm just gonna boot things up. So the battery's all connected. We got the Bosch Purion display, power button on top. Comes to life pretty quickly. It's got faint like white backlighting that's just on all the time. It says update software. We're just gonna pass that again. It's cause this is kind of a demo bike. Um, walk mode button at the bottom. It doesn't work if you're in off. So you have to be in one of the four levels of assist, eco, tour, sport, or turbo. 340% output in turbo mode. That's where you get the 75 Newton meters of torque, excellent acceleration and better maintaining those high speeds. That's what I've noticed during my rides. Sport, it's like 240% assist, tour 140, and I think Eco is like 60. So it's very minimal on Eco, but it definitely helps to remove some of that extra weight. Again, 54.6 pounds. It's you know, it's, there's some weight here, but it's because it's got those nice alloy fenders. It's got the extra lights and that big battery pack so you can go the distance. So let's see. We've got a light indicator down there for the headlights. If I hold the plus button, you would be able to turn on and off the lights, but the way it's set up right now, they're on all the time because this is speed pedal -ec. Um That just depends on how each company sets it up. If I hold the minus key for a second, we can get our trip distance, 34 miles. Total distance, 34 miles. And then range, range is so cool because as you change levels of assist, it dynamically updates. So we're in eco mode right now, 60% assist, 113 miles. So I'm being kind of conservative on the site saying about 100 miles. And then in uh, the, the top level, we get 39 miles. So 40, that's kind of what I was saying, roughly 40. I try to kind of err on the conservative side. This is a lot more um, actionable than the five ticks down here. Those are 20% steps versus an actual mile estimate. And if you're someone who likes kilometers, just hold the minus key and tap the power button and it switches over to kilometers. Pretty great system. I like it. One thing that's always bummed me out is there's this little micro USB port right there, but it's not actually usable for charging phones. It's for diagnostics and software updates, which it's asking us to do right now. It's a minor complaint. I asked Bosch about this. I'm like, why? Why, Bosch? You know, make it happen. And they were like, well, it's such a small circuit board that we're using here, and we're trying to keep it small and compact, and we didn't want to overload it. Can't really support charging off of it as a result. They do have 
uh, an Intuvia, it's a big display, and a Kiox display, and they even have a smartphone interface now too. So, you know, a lot of those can be connected right into this if you work with your shop, you pay a little bit of extra money. You don't have to stay stuck with this. This is not removable. It does swivel though. Um, it works well enough and it keeps the bars clean and leaves you plenty of room for maybe mounting a phone right there for GPS and stuff. It's a good system. Some other, like food for thought, um, with these lithium ion batteries, they're really nice, but you want to take good care of it because it's pretty expensive, especially the new brand new you know, power tubes. Uh, it's like a thousand plus to replace that. So avoid extreme heat, especially, and make sure you, you keep it charged at least 20%. Um, between 20 and 80 is really the sweet spot. Uh, that's where the battery is probably the most comfortable. Extreme cold isn't as damaging, but it's going to limit your range. So if it's a really cold day, you know, you just want to bring that yeah, maybe like inside or something and store it in a place where it's going to give you the range you need to get to work and back. So I think that's it. Looks like we did this just in time. We got some more cyclists coming up on us. Might be a good chance to do a ride test. You ready for that, Fernando? Just do it. Something, something else. Um, the, oh, did I miss something? Yeah, just to let you know that the, 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 um, the plug, the, the charging plug and the keys that we have here. Uh, last year, we were, we had to put it here in the bottom just because of the the way that the Bosch system is set up. But mm -hmm. now with the power tube, we put it here so you don't have to bend when you have to connect. That's a, another good it. point. Yeah, I'm, I'm all yeah. about like, you know, what if the bike's laid down or, you know, wanting to avoid those crank arms. But you make a good point for people who, you know, if you're a little bit older or something, my knees hurt. I don't you know, bending all the way down here and trying to get your face close so you can see. This is so, this is better in every way. So I'm so glad you guys could do that. I really appreciate you pointing that out. Um, any other things that I missed or that you want to highlight? All right. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Thanks, man. Okay, guys, we're going to take off and do a little bit of riding here. Boot this thing up, follow Fernando. Always like to take it up to turbo. There we go. Lead on, buddy. Awesome. Uh, the Bosch system is definitely one of the more like powerful and, and like noticeable systems. You get power if you want it. We are in the highest level of assist right now. I'm gonna take it down to tour. You know, it's still, it's definitely there. It's a lot more subtle. Thanks guys. <laughs> Tee hee. <laughs> Beautiful area. Saying, okay, I think there's a hill over here that we were gonna do a climb test on. I'm gonna downshift. I love that you can dump a lot of gears with this one. It's got a three shift low. I think it's good, man. And then a two way high, so you can push or you can pull. And then there's the shift detection. Is this the hill? Sweet, so. Yeah, I mean, I'm not having a problem. It's definitely a steep hill. I'm gonna let this car go past. Maybe downshift a little bit. And just start from, start from standstill. That's a good test. Oh, look at this. Hey! <laughs> look at that. Kids, like, street luging. Nice. <laughs> oh boy. Shifting into a higher gear while climbing, handling it like a champ. We're definitely going slower, but I haven't had to stand up. Very capable, very capable motor system. Neat to get that 75 Newton meters of torque on a speed motor now too. It used to be just 63 Newton meters. So that's a big improvement, which I, and I already, I thought it was pretty good before too. So it's not bad. Got a little bit of dirt, you know, with these larger tires, they, they feel pretty stable. They're definitely comfortable enough, like on the road, get a little bit of vibration dampening. This is a all aluminum alloy, like the fork, everything on this frame. Um, so I'm just going to start off 
and pedal for a little bit and describe like the comfort and also just give you a sense of the power. We are in turbo here, so I'm gonna start off and do it. Feeling pretty good. This is the bumpy stuff, so I'm bracing myself a little bit with my legs. You know, and I can feel it, like there's no suspension fork. It's a little bit of vibration, but you could always get yourself 31.6 millimeter suspension seat post back here if you wanted to soften it up. I like that saddle a lot. It's a Velo saddle, it's got that the pure leather. Same with the grips. Uh, the ergonomic helps for sure. It's a little bit more it, you know, it's stiff. It's really responsive because of this frame setup, but uh, it's not its not quite as comfortable as like upright or relaxed as some of the other Bulls models we've checked out. Okay, guys, from here you can not really see that 44.2 chain ring, but we got the nice plastic cover. 11 to 42 teeth in the 10-speed cassette back here. Maybe that's why they call it the Urban Evo 10. I just wanted to give you this view because you can hear and kind of see the chain moving, see how responsive pedal assist is. And uh, yeah, again, this might be a little bit louder than the final version of the motor, but to me, it's still, I mean, it's still working great. It feels, it's very satisfying. I really like the new speed motor from Bosch. Gen 4 is pretty awesome. Um, I'm gonna be in the highest level of assist because that's my favorite. Let's do it. Oh, and you can listen for the fenders and any rattling when I go over bumps. Very nice and pretty quiet. Like I'm purposefully shifting through the gears hard and fast um, and it's just working great. I mean, it's very tight. That's how I would describe this. Now I'm gonna go down this hill and I'm gonna pedal. We're gonna go beyond 28 miles per hour and this is supposed to freewheel. There isn't supposed to be any extra drag like there used to be with the reduction gear. Even then it was not like deal killer for me, but it was something people would always point out like, yeah, there's some reduction drag. This doesn't have it. It's just a standard chain ring, one to one. So let's do it. Okay, we got up to like 33 miles per hour there. And I could definitely notice when the motor stopped helping, uh, but we were still able to accelerate. It was no problem and just a lot of fun. For me, that was a test. Like what would it be like riding without a battery, riding like a bike and um, you know, it works out pretty well. Hey guys, we're just cruising to a spot. Thought it'd be fun to get some third person perspectives. Gotta love that one-handed braking going on. We're going left or right? Left, left. okay. There we go. Let's race, Fernando. Do it. <laughs> He's beating me because he can shift gears. It's not fair. There we go. Dropping some gears. Very stable with these bigger tires. I don't know if we're going to be able to catch him, guys. We're 26, 27.6. Definitely more powerful with the new Bosch motor. Fourth generation is really impressive. <laughs> Starting out. Should have dumped a bunch of those gears, but it's all right. Let's do it now. I love the uh, higher cadence support. Just awesome. As someone who likes to spin, these new motors are just awesome. Also, he was telling me these are a little bit pre-production, so the motor should be even quieter than this in the final run. Okay, guys, I'm gonna do a brake test. I'm gonna ride up the hill and then 
see how these things handle the downhill. Because again, you got the 180 millimeter rotor up front, which is nice because that's where a lot of the stopping happens when your momentum shifts forwards or your mass. And then in the back, we've got 160. It's important to have good brakes for a speed pedal X. So let's do it. Nice. Good braking means no skidding. So we did a we did a pretty good job. That was that was awesome. Well, guys, I think that's about it. We'll see you back at the site with all those details. You can compare some of the bulls bikes we're covering the whole line this year. It's always fun to get your feedback too if you've got this motor or if you have experience with this company. I'm a fan of bulls because they have a big network of dealers, so you can actually go in and get fitted, make sure you get the right size, or determine which frame size works best for you. Um, yeah, have fun out there. Ride safe. Love ya. We'll see you next time. See you guys. Thank you, Kurt.